let us talk to the one and only Logan Paul. There he is. Logan. What's happening? Ariel, how are you? Hi, dude. What's up, man? Hey. So cool. Yeah, man. I'm so happy that you came on. I thought there was no chance you were coming on. Nah, bro. I'm a I'm a fan of you, dude. I, I really appreciate what you've built over the years. Like you've you've you found a lane really early that kind of didn't exist. And I respect anyone who sticks to their craft and becomes like the master at it. So I'm I'm honored, dude. Let's let's chop it up. Let's go. Thank you. That actually sounds like yourself. The way you just described me, it sounds exactly like yourself, <laughs> right? I only like people who sound and do what I do. I love it. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. You know, you just you pave a way, and you went you went for it, and it worked. And I think it's really cool. I appreciate that very much. So, uh, as I was just kind of running down before we uh, we connected here, a lot going on in your life, as always. You're doing a ton. Uh, I wanted to start with the slap fighting championship. We just showed the promo. You're teaming up with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I saw your podcast last week. Freaking Arnold is on your show, showering you with yeah. praise. You're telling the story of being a little kid, going to the Arnold Classic, trying to get a picture with the guy, and now you're freaking teaming up. Not only are you teaming up, like he knows you. He's done his research. He is a fan of yours. How surreal is that? It. I can't believe it. Uh, I, I am rarely left speechless. I, I, I didn't know what to say after he praised Jake and I and our accomplishments like in detail, like it wasn't just bullshitting. He like yeah. knew what we were up to. And he, he kind of noticed the, the bit of like innovative disruptor uh, path that we're on. And he, he related it to himself. So it was a huge honor. And yeah, man, like, I, like how the fuck do you respond to that? When Arnold Schwarzenegger, one of the greats is praising me who looked up to him my entire life so much so that I went to the Arnold classic with my dad when I was 12 and was ecstatic when I got in three feet range of him. And I, and I remember it to this day, I was like, I was like, Oh my God, dude, like I was this close to Arnold Schwarzenegger. And now I'm going back to the Arnold classic on March 5th in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Go back to Ohio, my home state to host the slap fighting championship with him. Like, I, I don't know, dude, I have like a bit of like imposter syndrome. I just, I, I, this life becomes harder and harder to comprehend. And so now I'm just fucking rolling with the punches, man. I don't know what's going on. So how did this even come about? Like, how did you link up with Arnold to do this? How did this come about? Um, I believe I was pro approached by Famio, who um, actually put on the Floyd fight. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, they believe I'm a good partner. I believe I'm a good partner. And apparently Arnold believes I'm a good partner. Um, you know, for multiple reasons, whether it's marketing, uh, uh, acumen, whether it's my, my platform, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a service, if you will, you know, I'm, I can provide eyeballs with, um, my programs because we're doing it on my YouTube channel. So, you know, you have 22.3 million people that are going to be watching potentially. And, uh, I was actually invested in the, not, not financially, but invested in slap fighting about a year and a half ago. I don't know if you know this, but I was supposed to go to Russia. To I saw it. I saw the video. Like the, yeah, bro. In like the bootleg, like <laughs> first, uh, first uh, slap fighting tournament that they had, because I, I, I had seen this phenomena of these fucking guys standing across from each other and slapping the shit out of each other. I, th I thought this was the most ridiculous thing ever. So we scripted an entire mockumentary and we're going to go to Russia and in the, in, you know, the, the vein of Sasha Baron Cohen, uh, uh, actually do the thing, but put a whole storyline around it. We did this with, um, we did this with the flat earthers. Like I, yes. I don't, again, I don't know if you know this. I fully yeah, yeah. infiltrated the flat earth community you know, the guys that I think of earth is flat. The earth is a fucking flat. Right. And so like, <laughs> We, we scripted this thing and I, I was going to do it. And then I ended up um, slapping this guy, this 350 pound like slap master from the States just to test. You know, I've never open hand fucking yeah. slapped a, a human before. And, and, and I knocked him out cold, like, like cold, cold, starched him to the point where an hour after I hit him, he didn't fucking know who he was. Wow. He, didn't he know was a big he, guy, right? Wasn't he a big dude? Yeah, he's probably yeah. 350 pounds, probably like six foot three. He's a, he's a big guy. And so I was like, I was like, damn, A, I, I believe I could do that to any person standing across from me. I just, I, bro, again, you've been boxing for three years. I know how to hit. I'm strong. I, I, I know where the button is. But B, what if that happens to me? Because they can do it too, dude. Right. What if I lose the coin flip and I don't get to go first? And I get like demolished to the point where I, I don't know who I am. That's concerning. So I backed out, uh, but now 
I get to host the competition and watch these crazy fucking dudes slap the shit out of each other with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, shot, sign me up. Wow. So you were legit going to do it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. dude. I took a, a $30,000 loss because of uh, getting our whole team visas, booking flights to Russia, the hotels, accommodations, everything. Like I, I, I took... I took 30K to the chin uh, by, by canceling that that trip. So are you now actually involved in the slap fighting championship or is this just a one-off for you? Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I think if it does well, potentially there's a conversation there okay. because, you know, it's, it's a bit up in the air what's going to happen with this sport. It, it's obviously a sport. It's combat sports. But... What's the longevity of this look like? Mm -hmm. Is it is it truly a league? I don't know. Are the athletes going to be sustainable? Just getting hit in the head over and over again, like, um, or, or is it like the next kind of viral phenomenon where influencers or people who are are chirping online don't have to train three months boxing and learn learn how to box just to put on a mediocre event? You just come and slap slap each other. You want to settle a beef? You want to settle a dispute? Like, yeah, come slap the shit out of each other in me and Arnold's uh, uh, championship. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. It's kind of it's kind of open ended to be honest with you. If if I like how it goes, sure. And so that's uh, this Saturday, March 5th, on your YouTube channel, fanmeo.com as well. What time is it at? Do you know? Is that this Saturday? Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, oh it's March God. 5th. Wow. Well, <laughs> life is moving fast, man. Life is moving fucking quick. Um, man, I don't, I don't even know what time it is. I'm going to get yelled at by the PR team. I imagine it's probably at like 4, I'll 5 figure it out. PST. I'll figure yeah. it out. I got a press release about it, so I'll <laughs> I'll uh, I'll mention it afterwards. Uh, but people, they don't need me to mention it. They'll they'll find it very easily. By the way, as far as like the coolest and and kind of most surreal things you've ever done, teaming with Arnold is that is that up there? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Having him on my podcast was like a dream come true. He's one of my favorite guests uh, that we've had. I, I like certain people you have on are so seasoned, professional special unique human beings and 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 he's he's all of that through and through like he's everything you could ever ask for he knows how to tell a story yeah he's got hundreds of amazing stories he's hilarious he's well versed yeah <laughs> yeah I, I don't know dude dream come true to be honest so okay so you have that going on last week we find out you're a part of wrestlemania and not like last year's wrestlemania like you're actually involved in a match with the miz going up against the mysterios you get involved how did this come about? Like, you're not just like a celebrity dude. Like you're a part of the match. You're his tag team partner. Yeah, man. Again, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, dude. I, I say yes to things that sound kind of fun. And they they wanted me to compete at WrestleMania. I like The Miz. Uh, I've had him on our podcast. We're both from Ohio. Yeah. Uh, and we've always just gotten along. And so, yeah, we ended up... <laughs> <laughs> teaming up against the Mysterios who are like a legendary WWE family in, in, in uh, themselves. And so like <laughs> same shit, dude, I don't know. I'll, I have one, I have one bucket list item that I've wanted to do my whole life. And I, I, this was before I ever even considered doing WWE or even it being a possibility. And that is to jump off the top rope. Wow. I want to jump off the top rope. I want to sail, sail through the air like a fucking eagle, eagle and land on someone. Did you grow up a big wrestling fan? Like pro wrestling. I know yeah. you wrestled, but like a WWF, WWE, did you grow up? I, I did. I was I was the kid who would uh, do the makeshift match with my friends in the basement and, and, and reenact all the moves. And, you know, like obviously we'd hurt each other and get rug burns and break bones and stuff. But I've been I've been a wrestler my whole life. And I've been a wrestling fan of WWE my whole life. And again, Another dream come true, man. I, my life is just a series of impossible things happening. I don't know what to do anymore or how to comprehend it. And so, um, I mean, you know this, but uh, it's in a little over a month, right? It's April 4th, 5th in in Dallas. Yeah. I mean, that, that you know, people like to crap on wrestling. Oh, it's fake. It's scripted. It's, I mean, you need some serious athleticism to be involved in these matches. Mysterios, I mean, they're athletes in their own right. High flyers. I this. There's nothing fake about how physical yeah. WWE is. It's what I learned just kind of watching and being in the arena and seeing how these guys train is like, man, they are hurting each other. They are like actually inflicting pain on one another. And like, 
it doesn't always go well. You know, guys will come backstage with a bloody nose or like a broken rib or, or it's stuff you don't see on TV, but man, it's a serious thing. I remember um, I was watching Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn at WrestleMania last year and they actually slapped each other in the face probably about eight times each as hard as they could. And I was like, yo, this is, this is, this is real, man. Like, I don't, I, I, I get it. I get, I get the, the alleged rumor or whatever, but man, you, you, you gotta have balls and you gotta have a high pain tolerance to be able to, to do it. Especially if you don't know what you're, what you're doing, which right. I don't. So what kind of training are you doing for the next month for this? Yeah, I'm going to go to Orlando and get like proper, proper training there and like just learn everything I need to know about uh, taking hits, giving hits. And man, I don't know, just fully immerse myself in the, in the sport like I do with, with everything that I end up doing. Do you have any pro wrestling training? I actually, I actually do, ironically. Um, I'm a little nervous to be honest. So I, I had this show called Logan Paul Versus. Mm -hmm where I basically put myself in a bunch of extreme scenarios, Logan Paul versus uh, uh, surviving on an island for 48 hours, um, demolition derby, uh, Lucha Libre was the one that I did. So, so Lucha Libre is, is a little bit different than the WWE style pro, pro wrestling, but in the same vein of, you know, uh, a big show and uh, high flying moves. And it was very hard. It was very hard for me. And so I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to give it my all, obviously. But again, this, it's not easy. It's not, it's right. not easy, bro. I, I tell you something's easy. That's, that's, that's my, like, I, I, that's, that's kind of what I'm balancing with the WWE is I have to stay true to me because it isn't, I'm not playing a character, you know, I'm me. Maybe I'll be like an amplified, like punk ass version of myself, but it's, it's at the end of the day, it's not like, Oh, it's the Maverick. No, it's like Logan Paul is partnering right. with the Miz. And so I'll just be 100% me, 100% real, and the shit's hard. You nervous? Yeah. There's a high. I don't, I, don't really get I don't really get nervous for much anymore, but it's a new sport. And dude, there's 100,000 people yes. watch, <laughs> watching it, WrestleMania live. Live, right? Yeah. I mean, well, like. And, and, and as you may know, there's a high bar. Like Bad Bunny last year, he was incredible. Like the celebrity. So good. Right. Bad Bunny was amazing. Uh, Pat McAfee had a match. He was incredible. So I feel like there's now. Pat McAfee had a match? Yeah, he was great. He was amazing. <laughs> a couple matches, actually. I didn't know that. He jumped off the, the cage that. and everything. I mean, I feel like the, 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 the bar is very high for you. So not to oh put God. any more pressure, but. No, 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 no. I, 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 I love pressure. I'll answer to it. And I'm like, bro, I'm positive. I'll do fantastic. I just, like, I'm just excited, but I do have to acknowledge I am nervous. Okay. <laughs> Who is going to be training you for the next month? I actually have no idea. Okay. And also like, do you ever feel like you have too much on your plate? I mean, you got this, that, you know, like there's a lot going on in your life. <sighs> um, Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah, when you do too much, you don't do anything. And I'm right at that limit. I, I unfortunately can't do anything else. Um, I, I, this is actually the only like show I've, I've said yes to just because I've, I've just been doing so much and I, and I don't know where to allocate my time or energy a lot of the, a lot of time because like there's, there's two more projects that I have that are going to be announced um, probably in the next month. That again, I'm I'm fully diving into and working on behind the scenes. Just no one knows about it yet. Um, and the one one of them will be the biggest thing I ever do. It'll be the, it's like my my life and soul is wow. put into this project. Is where which is where most of my time these days goes. Like uh, you know the the public sees a certain thing and they see me moving a certain way, but the big boy is is still yet to come. Can you give us a hint as to what that is? Um. Man, it's a big, it's a big project. It's a big project that's just a part of my life. Uh, just between friends, you know. Just between friends. I don't know. I don't know because I, the messaging is really important because I, I don't want to undermine the significance of of how truly important this project is to me. And so, like, I don't, I don't want to say. I get it. I get it. Thing. I don't want, I don't want to peer pressure you into this. Um, all right. So we got 
We got the slap fighting. We got the wrestling. Now, I do have to ask you, you just mentioned him. What's going on with Floyd? I mean, can you explain the situation to me? Floyd isn't paying you. You're owed money. What's the situation? You fought him back in June. Big yeah. event. What is happening here? Yeah, you tell me, man. Um, I've, I've not been paid in full. That is a fact. There also have been alleged under the table cash deals that I was excluded from, even though my name and likeness was used to sell our fight. Um, he's in multiple lawsuits for this fight already to him. You know, he used the verbiage, a legalized bank robbery when describing this fight, but it turns out it wasn't so legal. Huh. Uh, <laughs> and we're just trying to collect what's rightfully ours. Um, yeah, man, I, it's, it sucks. And, and he came out recently and said something like, this is, this is the name of the game. This is how it works in, in, in boxing. But I, I don't know if it is. I don't know if that's true. I think after you fight, you should probably get paid. I don't think it takes this long to, to count the money. So he was, I think he was trying to refer to like the pay-per-view buys and, and what comes in. Are you saying that like your show, might, like what you had agreed to, you haven't gotten as well? Uh, say it again. Like, like what, like what are you missing basically? Is it your cut of the pay-per-view? Is it your cut of like your actual purse? I don't know, but I know it's not everything. Okay. Is it a large amount? Yeah. Large enough for me to make a fuss about. Right. And I would imagine there was a point where you were like, I'm not going to make a fuss. Nothing's happening. Now I'm going to make a fuss. Like you uh, reached God, let me tell you something for the longest time. I bit my fucking tongue. Right. We'd hear this every week. The money's coming next week. The money's coming next week. Three months in, I realized the money ain't coming next week. And so now I'm a bit offended. I've been lied to. And I haven't been fucking paid. Mm. And I never, ever, 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 ever thought that I would be the where's my money guy. Who, who likes that guy? Yo, where's my fucking money? But the only way to get this guy to move is to pipe up embarrass him let people know that if you fight him you ain't gonna get paid or that maybe he doesn't have the money that he says he has or or i don't even know i don't even know what other scenario there is i i i think i think because i'm a youtuber it could be perceived that i'm easy to take advantage of in a discipline and sport that has been historically run and dominated by floyd and his cronies, but that's kind of shitty for me and it feels unfair and I just want to make things right. Could I ask how much does he owe you? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, have you talked to him? Mm -mm. And when you see him, I think this weekend he was at a sporting event. He had a massive amount of chains around his neck, like all that's oh, <laughs> when you see that's that my check. <laughs> When you, That's my check. <laughs> does that drive you nuts? No, nah, I don't really, I don't really like stress too much about seeing my check around his neck. But like, I'm coming after one of those chains or two. Trust. And to be clear, <laughs> is he the one that you're waiting for payment from, or is it from a different entity? Like, is it from Mayweather oh, Promotion? No, I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, okay. No, nah, because everything I say is just going to be an assumption. I don't know. Okay. I, just, I just know I haven't been paid in full. Got it. Got it. Uh, by the way, did you ever find out how much that did on pay-per-view, like the, the actual number? I think it was 1.2 million buys. Wow. That is incredible. On a Sunday night. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it either. Uh, like, <laughs> I, I actually, like, I don't know. Everyone was floating around numbers beforehand. I thought it would be a little higher, to be honest with you. Maybe I'm just being fucking greedy. Okay. So. Yeah. 1.2 on a Sunday, man, is pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm happy with it. I'm happy. Now, will you box again? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I'm, I'm sweaty right now. I don't know if you could tell. I just got back from the gym. This is my first workout in eight months. Wow. Why? Why so long? Yeah. Dude, I'm, I've been I've been working on this project. I've been okay. I've been working on stuff behind the scenes. I've been working on Prime, um, a couple other corporate businesses, and uh, yeah, that the big the big boy as I've referenced um, that kind of just distracted me. I've never been good at being creative 
and physical at the same time. My creative pursuits don't often lend themselves well to me exercising. Okay. Are you exercising? Are you training for a fight right now? Not in particular. Just as this is the this is the training for training. Gotcha. But also, also, man, I want to look good for WrestleMania, dude. Like, I want to, you know, I got, I don't know what outfit I'm wearing, but I'm gonna lean in. I'm gonna lean in. I'm gonna do something crazy. And so I want to have, have some, some, some abs, dude. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I don't doubt that. Now, uh, do you think you fight in 2022? No, no. Oh shit! It is 2022. My bad. Yeah, yeah, yes. Sorry. Yes, I do. Sorry. Uh, there, there is a, a very. Fa- I, I will. You know, I'll be honest. I don't know who this man is, but a uh, huge star in Brazil, Winderson Nunes, uh, who is sort of like an influencer who now boxes as well. And I think you guys have been going back and forth. And I think you even replied to him, right, in Portuguese. Uh, is there any interest in making that fight for you? Yeah, I mean, that's who I would love to fight. To be honest with you, Winderson's huge. And we've been having a back and forth for a couple of years now. And I think similarly to myself, he's pivoted multiple careers and the kid obviously works hard. He's interested in a lot of different disciplines. And I think it'd be an amazing match with two massive entertainers. He's got 60 million yeah. or so followers on Instagram. Like the, he rivals some of the biggest celebrities in the world. And in Brazil, I don't think it gets much bigger than him. So like in the same way, when I first boxed KSI, it was an international uh, 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 bloodbath, you know, UK versus the USA. It'd be cool to do UK versus, uh, or U- United States versus Brazil. Are you in favor of your career as far as boxing is concerned, just being, you know, the guy who fights those kinds of fights, or is there a part of you that would like to see where you can go against, you know, actual boxers, um, your age, all that stuff? Yeah. I'm gonna leave that up to Jake. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave that up to Jake. Um, he wants to be a, a, a real, a real live boxer. He wants to go 10 and 0. Um, a, I don't care. B, I'm already professionally 0 and 1. So I've ruined my chances. <laughs> like, I, I think I'm 0 and 1. I think I'm 0, I'm 0 1 and 1. Like, right, right. What, a, what a lame start, dude. So like, fuck it, bro. I'll just go on and put, a, put on some big shows. And, uh, you know, hopefully, I mean, you know, we'll see what happens with this Winderson situation, but the next person I, I fight will, will get knocked out. I, I have no doubt in my mind that me going from fighting the best fighter on the planet in Floyd Mayweather to any other person um, will end any other way than, than a knockout equivalent to that of my brothers, which is another thing, bro. Like Jake's out here fucking laying people out time and time again in the exact same way. And that inspires me, dude. Like, I want one of those. That's cool. Has he exceeded your expectations in terms of what he's done as a boxer? Yeah, man. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Dude, dude, I remember a time like not that long ago, maybe like two and a half years ago, where like, and this is, I'm ashamed to say this because I'm his brother and I love him, but I had chalked him up. I had chalked him up to the game. I was like, yo, he's, his attitude or, 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 or he's going about this the wrong way. And he's just being a fucking like punk about, about his brand and his persona. And then he put in the work and the work led to results and actual action. And so I realized yo, I'm done doubting Jake Paul forever. Like anything the kid says now, I'm like, well, like I've seen him do it before, you know? Um, and, 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 I, I get, I get so inspired by him now. And, and he truly is like an example of, of making it out of the mud, man. And yeah, he's, he's, he's definitely exceeded my expectations along with um, like everyone's mm. I presume. Who would you like to see him fight next? If you, if you could pick. Then I'd love to see him fight Nate Diaz and then eventually Conor McGregor. I think that'd be such a cool fight, man. What like, do you make of his uh, his feud with Dana White? Oh, man. Oh, man. Jake and Dana White. Jake versus Big Dana. Uh, 
it's tough, you know, because I like Dana a lot, dude. Like I always have. I, I I was a fan of Dana, then he's always been good to me. He calls me before the fights, he offers me tickets, and then my brother's just <laughs> motherfucking him in his business. <laughs> I'm like, damn, like um obviously I gotta I gotta side with my brother and uh, as a viewer I'm very entertained I think it's really funny um and I also think that he's doing a good thing I think he's doing a really good thing because he's a kid who's vocal about a situation I believe is important fight or pay and the people who should be speaking up can't because they're in a bit of a vice grip from Dana. And so Jake ain't employed by Dana. He can do whatever he wants. And as loud and obnoxious as he is, sometimes he's actually doing dope shit for combat sports. And I think in, I think in three to five years, people are going to realize how, how significant he was in, in, in changing the landscape of the sport. It does feel like I, I remember seeing you at the fight in December. You're talking to to Nathan Diaz, and that's somewhat of a rival of his as well. Like, uh, it feels like you're the guy in the family. Like, you're buddies with everyone, Dana Diaz, this, and he's the one making enemies. Is that kind of, like? It doesn't feel like you have a ton of enemies in the fight game and in you know the you know the territory that you reside in. And yet he doesn't mind. I mean, I guess he's the problem child, but he doesn't mind like poking you know people. It, would that be a fair assessment? And then does it get awkward for you when you're like buddies with the guys that he's going after? It's a very fair assessment. And it's hundred percent correct. You said it. He's the problem child. Right. He's always been like that. <laughs> you know, like that's the, the, the dichotomy of Jake Paul is that he's a fucking problem, but the kid's a genius. Like there's no other way to cut it and like laugh at that statement, but he's 25 years old coming up with brilliant marketing tactics to move needles. Yeah. I can't wait to watch him evolve into an actual adult with a real brain. Like imagine when that happens, it doesn't make it awkward for me. Uh, Cause I can navigate pretty well, you know, like, I, and I, th I think we've done a good job at establish, establishing ourselves as two different entities and we'll continue to do that. But like, again, he he's covered in tattoos. He's the big boxer guy. I'm more like the artistic creative, like no tattoos, clean cut guy. Like where I want to be president of the United States one day, you know, I don't, I don't I don't know if Jake has any um, goals or pursuits in mind of, of making um, worldwide change. You know, like I'd, I'd love to do something like that. We just have to, different goals. And uh, I, think, I, think, I think people are starting to recognize that more and more as we develop. I have seen you say this about being president. This is legit? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why do you want to do that? Okay. So I know it sounds fucking absurd, but dude... I'm 26 years old. I haven't even been in LA or had the chance to mature in my adult life for a decade. I've, only, I've, I've, I've been learning and experiencing and just absorbing knowledge for the past eight years, ever since I moved to LA. I'm 26. I'll be eligible to be president when I'm 35. That gives me nine more years to become the best version of myself possible, to just learn as much as I can about people, people, culture, society, where we fall short, where we're strong. And I just think I'd be a good leader one day. And I think the, the presidential spot needs a bit of a, of a fresh take, if you will. I think, I think, I think the country could, could use a, a, a person who's a little bit more nuanced, a little bit more innovative and a little bit more authentic. I think a lot of politicians fall short. And personally, I, 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 have, I have trouble watching because I know you're reading off a teleprompter. I know how, I know this speech was written for you by your campaign manager. I like, or I'm just not like that. I think, I think part of the biggest blessing about um, this brand that I built, if you will, is that um, you either love me or you hate me for exactly who I am. You know, there's no smoke and mirrors. I'm, I'm, I'm me, I'm Logan, and you accept that as uh, truth or you uh, deny me and, and, and ignore me, which is completely fine either way. But I think there's a lot of power in being authentic and I think it's a, I think it's a, a possibility that I could see myself wanting to do at that age. And who knows, man, I'm, it, it might not happen, but I got big goals, man. I've, I've, 
I've said crazier shit. If I was 18 and I said, I want to fight Floyd Mayweather, like I'd be laughed at, mm-hmm. you know, I'd be ridiculed. And so again, I just don't feel like anything is impossible. And in your mind, does this happen in your thirties or does this happen in your fifties? Nah, it'd be, it'd be when I'm older. It'd be, it'd be in my forties. Okay. Wow. This is, I need, and, I need to like fully, I mean, bro, Donald Trump did it. He was a, he was a fucking reality star. Right. He was a reality star, billionaire business guy. Like and he did it. Crazier things have happened. This actually uh, brings up a question that I wanted to ask you. Of course, a lot of people found out who you were outside of the YouTube world when that incident happened with the the the, the vlog in Japan, um, and your career could have gone like two separate ways, right? It, like you could have bounced back, you which you did, or it could have essentially ended. I wonder, and again, you come across as like the more grounded, mature one. You're the older one. You're not trying to pick <laughs> fights. You're trying to become the president, all that stuff. If that doesn't happen, if you don't make that mistake, are you still the guy? Are you still the, the the massive disruptor? Are you kind of the jackass? Are you the you know the guy who's just sort of acting a fool? Like I actually feel like a huge positive came out of that and changed the course of your career and also the course of your mentality and your personality and your maturation as a human being. Is that because even looking at your earlier videos compared to like videos afterwards, a lot changed. The tone changed. Your demeanor changed. Is that a fair thing to say? It's very fair. I've never said this before, and I, I don't know if this is a bit taboo, but I often look back at that time of my life and the person that I was unfortunately becoming. And now at 26, I can safely say that Japan was the biggest blessing in my life. I needed a, I needed a, a reset. I needed life to check me and, and it did. And I became a person that I ended up loving instead of becoming that jackass because I was headed down a nasty path that was validated by clout, money, fame, wealth, um, which is all just superficial bullshit. And it doesn't make a person great. And so I really had to revisit my values, rediscover myself, open my ears, listen to the people around me, put the right people in place around me. And yeah, man, I, I, at the time it seemed like the like worst thing ever, obviously, man, I, I don't think there was a more hated person in the world than me. And I'm still rebuilding to this day and trying to, trying to learn and keeping my ears open and, 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 and getting involved in positive conversation and positive change around the world. But, um, it ended, it ended up just, forcing me to become someone who I love. And I'm not sure I loved myself back then. You ever watch some of that old stuff? And if you do, what do you can't. think? You can't watch it? Can't. I, I, I think it's the most, I mean, my, my, some of my fans find this hard to hear, but I, I cannot watch content pre 2018 for really? me. Wow. I, I, I think it's, I think it's a childish version of myself. I actually can't believe it's the same person. Um, yeah. And, and I, and I, I've considered, I've considered removing all those videos, but I think evolution and natural growth and failure is important. I don't think a lot of people are really truly willing to put it all on the line. And I'm, I am, and I am, from an authentic place as well. Like I'll openly and honestly admit that I fail a lot and I fuck up a lot. And hopefully those numbers go down the more I grow and the more I learn, but it's all online, dude. Like what you see is what you get. It's what I said earlier. Like you either like me or don't like me for exactly who I am. And I'm willing to admit when I made a mistake, take accountability, learn and move forward. And like, that's human nature. I, I, I praise the human who's never fucked up in their life. That person doesn't exist. No matter how, how high and mighty these Twitter warriors might think they are, you're a human being and you've made your mistakes. Perhaps they weren't public, but we all do it. And I have no problem, I have no problem admitting when I'm wrong and learning. I was actually watching yesterday, just to kind of refresh my memory, your interview with Michael Strahan. 
um, after all that. How scared was that kid? Yeah. Like it, your whole, everything you had built was about to go away, right? It was all gonna crumble. Everyone was coming after you. Like you said, you were the most hated man. I remember watching the NBC Nightly News and you, like, you were one of the first stories. Like it was kind of surreal that this had become such a massive story. Um, and you upset a lot of people. Like that kid sitting there with Michael Strahan and seeing everything kind of crumbling around you, how scared were you? Horrified, mostly because I wasn't fully able to comprehend where I fucked up. Like it, 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 it took me a while to, to really understand the damage that I had done A, to the world and B, to myself. That made me make some dumbass decisions because it wasn't just that. It was a series of, of mistakes that I had made from God knows whatever motivation, but trying to, not, I don't, I wasn't, because it wasn't pretending. I knew what I had done was wrong, but, it, but I didn't fully understand it until I was completely removed. And now again, I can look back and, 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 and fully download all of it and, and understand the implication. Um, did someone help everything. you understand it? Did something help you understand it? Yeah, yeah. But it's, you know, uh, character shifts are gradual and they don't happen overnight. That's why you see these creators or anyone who makes a, a colossal mistake, myself included, with a half ass apology. Right. And then you come back with a little bit better of an apology. Now you got two fucking apology videos out there and because you kind of understand, but you don't really, and you're still the same person who made the mistake, but you know it was wrong, but not really why. Man, character shifts, A, are really hard to implement because you have to change your DNA. You have to change your beliefs, your thinking. However you got there is, is a whole separate issue, but you have to change who you are, which is hard. And then B, they just take a long time. They're not going to happen overnight. Hey, kid, you made a mistake. You, you, you drew on the walls. You took permanent ma magic marker and drew on the walls. Bad. Kid doesn't understand that the wall costs $3,000 and, and you used your entire uh, month's uh, work to pay, to pay for a new paint job on the wall and that it could have financial implica implications that will affect your family for the next month that you might be needing to eat less at dinner. Like, you know, like that takes a while for that kid to understand why his mistake truly was a mistake. You know, he, he knows his bad, but he doesn't know why. Mm. It took me a while to really understand and grasp like what I had done. And, and I think that's, again, human. I, I, I've always been a, a little slower to develop than most people, but I, I, don't, I don't find anything wrong in, um, in, in taking accountability and, and taking your time to, to, to improve. Why don't you post on YouTube? as much. I mean, your podcast is always up, but like, it's not like, I, I think you posted a couple of days ago about the slap fight, but like part of that, it was the Floyd fight. Like you're going yeah. used to go every day. Now you're going like eight months and it feels like it's getting longer and longer. Why is that? So, so a lot of haters experience creator burnout, myself included, um, pretty much every creator. And, uh, I, I realize why it happens why, and why it happens for me. And why it happened for me on YouTube, which is why I don't post much um, anymore on, on the platform. Um, I was tired of pretending to be someone else. It's exhausting. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the, shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut up. Like, yo, that's not me, dude. This is me. The podcast is me. I could do that podcast forever. And I will. It's fun. I get to sit at a table Talk to amazing people, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Tony Robbins, um, uh, Oliver Tree, uh, and George, Mike, my best friends, and just bullshit and, and be ourselves. Like, it's so much more fulfilling to me when I'm making stuff that is 100% true to me. I won't, I won't, I won't move now uh, unless I'm telling a story that is coming from here. Mm -hmm. And, and, I, and, and those stories are, uh, they come few and far between, you know, Un unless you embark on a crazy journey, which I did. And I'm, I'm going to have a whole YouTube run coming up here. Oh, okay. Regarding the project. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, I'll only tell a story if, if I, if I deem it worthy. 
By the way, one thing that's super impressive about your podcast, do you guys move the set wherever you go? Like, like when you're talking to Arnold, do you actually physically move that set to where your guest is? Yeah, it's, I don't know how we do it. I have to give a shout out to our team. Our team is incredible. Um, specific, specifically Caleb, our, uh, he is, he is impulsive. He, he, he runs the clips channel. He films the podcast. He takes all the equipment everywhere. And like, we have a sick team, man. Like this is, this is a team effort. And I think, it, I think people can tell. Cause yeah, dude, we, especially cause I live in Puerto Rico and I'm Mike and George are back in LA. Mm-hmm. George might be moving somewhere else. So we have to just like, make shit happen. We're actually doing a, um, I think I can say this. We're actually doing a, um, a, our first live audience show in Columbus for the, the weekend of the slap fighting thing. So this weekend. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, my God. I keep I keep yeah, yeah. Yeah. This weekend on, on Sunday okay. in Columbus, uh, we are going to have our first live audience show. Uh, I think, I think it's going to be first come first serve tickets are going to be available somewhere somewhere but um yeah man like 300 people watching ideally we we end up going on an impulsive tour and just like travel around the world and perform for people and you know george does his stand-up routine mike does a motivational talk maybe i'll give like an nft speech i don't fucking know what's going on but and then we run the episode and yeah it'll be fun so yo if you're in the columbus area or, or ohio area in general or want to watch impulsive live and uh we have some good things coming for the fans too like stay tuned do you have a few more minutes? I just want to ask you a few other questions. Is that all right? I'm good. Bro. Okay, yes, okay. Sir, yeah, I, I'm not yeah. going to take up too much of your time because I know you're you're super busy. But I hate to say I was uh, riveted by your your Pokemon video, the one that didn't really work out well for you. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. case those missed it, uh, you know, you you spend three point five million dollars on these really yeah. rare Pokemons. Uh, my kids love Pokemon cards. I can't imagine. I can't believe they're that expensive. But that's a crazy thing. And then they end up being GI <laughs> Joe cards. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's a, it's an incredible piece of content and kudos to you for like being cool with it and kind of joking along the way. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. We're showing a bit of a clip from it, but I would urge anyone to go check it out. Where did that end up? Like, how did that end? Did you get your money back? How does that story end? That was a fat L that's, (laughs) that's an example, bro. Of Like I, I, that's embarrassing. I took that on the chin. Um, I will say I don't have it as hard as, um, the guy, Matt who sold the box to me because uh-huh. Matt and I have done a couple other deals together and I, I bought the box or the case for him for three and a half million dollars. Um, and he's a friend, he's a business partner. He's become, you know, this, this homie. And so he wired the money back to me, no problem. Him retrieving his 2.7 million that he bought from the guys who sold it to him, who I mean, you know, I don't want to say, but allegedly probably were involved. Yeah. In, the uh, inauthenticity of the box is a little harder to retrieve. Right. He, 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 he's in, got the lawyers involved the whole night. Jeez. Is that the first time you were scammed? No, that wasn't the first time I was scammed. I've been, I've been fucking, I've been fucking stabbed in the back, dude. Like I, it's my manager calls it my education fund. You know, sometimes I, I don't even want to call them mistakes or maybe they are, but I, I like to take risks and, and sometimes I just get burned. Um, so the education fund is just probably a million dollars now of just like dumb decisions I've made or, or money that hasn't gone my way. And, but yeah, man, that's, that's part of the reason I'm actually so bullish on NFTs. I literally watched in real life, me get scammed from a physical product. That does not happen with non-fungible tokens. That's the entire point of the technology being on the blockchain. You can verify and authenticate your asset right there. And so like, damn, bro, (laughs) I love Pokemon. I'll continue collecting Pokemon. I think Pokemon's going to go up, up and up. I love holding the cards, but sheesh, back to the blockchain for me. By the way, when is the uh, the Maverick X Thug Nose NFT coming out? I mean, I think we took one in Tampa. Dude, I, oh yeah, I don't know, bro. I mean, we I feel did like, take one. Yeah, it was good too. It was. It was I mean, because really it's cool because like you actually saw it on TV, so that's almost like your authentication. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I feel like there's yeah, something dude. there. Yeah, dude, you're on to something. You're on to something, dude. <laughs> All right, I just want to throw that out. Uh, you and Hasbula, you guys doing anything together? I don't know. We try to get him to come to the slap funny thing. I don't think he's coming, uh, but I will, dude. I will. I will. 
meet up with Hezbollah and I will fuck him up. What? Well, I'm just yeah. kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know what would be no, sick? I'm, Bring no, him out to WrestleMania. I'm, Bring him out to WrestleMania with you and Miz. That is a good idea. Yo. That is a good idea. I would love to do that. Imagine he no, escorts awesome you guys. Dude. I had people coming up to us. They're like, you fighting Hezbollah? I'm like, what are you, what? How is that even, are you asking me that? You could do a great yeah. gag because Mysterio's small and like come out and have him dress up as Mysterio. You know, like they do that all the time and then oh, it reveals it. Funny, yeah. You know what I mean? Just, you could run with oh, that. Man, that's, that's on the house. I appreciate that. You, you get 10%, bro. Um, by the way, because of your wrestling background, will you ever compete in an MMA fight? Probably. Probably. Ugh. Oh, I thought you were going to say probably not. Probably yes? No, probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. I just, like, I get bored. I get fucking bored. It's why, like, I, I have so many interests and do so many things. It's like, why not? You know, who, like, who the fuck else is doing it or can? I think it'd be entertaining. I think it'd be great. How, how uh, have you been offered? Has anyone reproached you? How close is this to actually happening? Yeah, a few, a few. There was a... Uh, there's one in Japan actually um, oh, that I still might end up doing, but what? that excites me. That MMA, excites me. Um, legit MMA. Yeah. Yeah, yep. Wow. Okay. Uh, that would be cool. What about you versus Jake? You think it ever happens? <laughs> Man, <laughs> my answer is no. Yeah, that's my answer. Okay. I don't think not. It seemed like you paused there for a sec. Just like maybe, okay. maybe, you know. <laughs> what a scene that would be. Holy know. smokes. Uh, and then fi finally, your uh, former foe, now turned friend, turned business partner, KSI, has teamed up with you. I saw them. I was at uh, GNC recently, walking by with my kids. I saw them there, the prime. How is that going so far? And why did you team up with a guy who you once wanted to, I mean, I, I felt like you really hated the guy. Why did you team up with him to do this? Yeah, yeah, man. I, 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 at one point, I think we we probably did hate each other or again, at least pretended to hate each other to, right. to fight. Right. Um, but afterwards I had no interest in, in continuing the beef. And so I did a program of his, he came on impulsive. We chopped it up, realized we're kind of the same person, at least like living parallel lives and parallel careers. He's in the UK. I'm in the United States. We both work really hard. We both love being creative and we have a lot in common. And so after we realized we like each other, I, I pitched him this business idea and it worked. Like we made an amazing product. We're so proud of, he loves it. I love it. It shows a, a arc being completed of uh, conflict coming to resolution to enemies, now business partners and friends who made an amazing drink, bro. We, we, we are two months in and we just ran a through, we just moved our first 10 million bottles. Wow. Two months in. Damn. It's absurd. They can't stay on this on the shelves. We just had our best selling week last week in, in Kroger. Um, and, 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 and the fact that people are loving it as much as they are, dude, JJ and I are like floored. We are stunned. And, and I think it just goes to show the same message that JJ and I always preach, man. It's just like, yo, yo, just believe believe in yourself, work hard, go do it. And we both hold that as like a spine of our operation. And we've come together and again, made something great. It'll be exciting to see what happens with this. I'm wearing a, the prime shirt right now, but, mm -hmm. and once we expand to the UK, global, South Africa, man, I was just there. Everyone's asking for it. I'm like, South Africa, we coming eventually like, <laughs> um, yeah, all over Europe. It's, it's exciting, dude. It's, it's cool to go from, Little kid shit, uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, content making to big boy business moves using the platforms that we've built. That's really exciting to me. I have a lot of respect for you, man. A lot of respect for you and your brother. Uh, I know it's not cool for people in my position to say that, but screw that. Uh, what you guys do is inspiring to me. <laughs> it's the Thanks, truth. Thanks, man. Thanks. I, I, I get crap for it, and I don't care. Like I, I, I think you're both very likable. I think you're inspiring, and you're doing great, great stuff. You want to say something? Sorry. Thanks, man. No, I was just gonna say I'm I'm always so curious. Like, who give who gives you crap for it? Like, oh, it's just you know idiots online. Oh, why 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 do you talk about Jake? First of all, like I could go on a Jake rant, you know, until I'm blue in the face. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Again, as I've said I'm, on many. I'm different always just so curious. Like, 
he's creating positions, he's creating opportunities, he's talking about things that matter like fight or pay. And what, you know, the quote unquote haters want to bring up is he's not genuine, he's not authentic. Well, how about we find out? Why, why say he's not genuine or honest or sincere about it until you actually see the way this story plays out? He's helped deliver the biggest fight in women's boxing history. I mean, that's a big thing. He didn't have to get involved in that. So like I could go on and on and, and with you and the stuff that you're doing now, and I see the way kids talk about you, and I know you're doing big boy stuff now, but I mean, anyone who's making it out of nothing, just two kids with a dream, I have a lot of respect for. So, and I, I don't see you hurting anyone. You, and I love, I love the... I'll say that like, I'll just, I love the maturation of your personality and how you've evolved into a guy that I think it's okay for a dad. Like I have two kids, 10, eight, and you know, they watch Mr. Beast all day. They watch your stuff. And like, I love that you yeah. are now someone that a dad could feel good about telling his kids, it's okay to look up to that guy. You know uh, what I mean? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Of course, man. I, I, no, I'm, I'm honored. And that's like, that's an amazing compliment. Um, I just, I think, I think again, we're we're very close to the gig being up. Like the 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 hate, I get it. A lot of people see what they see. They make their assessments, conclusions, judgments. It's all good, but there might be a little more to the story, and that's hard for a lot of people to understand. It's hard to it's hard for people to extrapolate what's actually happening behind the scenes. I, I don't I don't know many people who meet Jake in real life and think he's a dickhead if any at all like he's a fucking sweetheart it's a gig guys yeah. it's a gig to get attention and make fighters worth more money like hello <laughs> well much respect slap fighting championship wrestlemania prime these other things that you teased us uh, about that should be coming yeah. out impulsive podcast yes, keep doing your thing logan thank you so much for doing this i know you don't do a lot of these so i really really appreciate it good luck this weekend good luck at mania i will see you there i'll be there as well and uh, this, Hell yeah. this Hell was awesome. Yeah. I really enjoyed this. You, bro. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Likewise. Likewise. Take it easy, bro. All right. Talk to you soon. There he is. The one and only Logan Paul. Uh, really enjoyed that. And uh, I hope you did as well.